様、この度はオンデマンド動画プログラム「聞こえの未来」をご視聴いただきまして誠にありがとうございます。この動画プログラムは茨城大学教育学部障害児生理学研究室とオーティコン補聴器が共同主催させていただいております。この動画は全部で5回シリーズで配信いたします。これまでの動画を見ていただいた方はお分かりかと思いますが最新の補聴器は従来の目標であった言葉の聞こえを向上させるっていうのみじゃなくて聞き取りづらい環境での聞こえやリスニングエフォートリスニングファティーグを減らすといったより高いレベルの課題に挑戦していると感じます。これらの能力は純音聴力検査や五音聴力検査だけでは測れないものです。そのののたため聞こえの未来を考えた時にどういった視点で超能評価を考えていけばいいのかという点について考えてみたいと思いますなるほど田丸先生ありがとうございましたそれでは皆様第5回動画オーチオグラムだけでは不十分をどうぞお楽しみください,ださい so, so far we have talked about the future of hearing so I think That all of those abilities cannot be assessed by the normal audio meter on the、yeah. speech, speech audio metry. But are such listening assessments, so like a listening effort of listening fatigue, becoming mainstream in、uh, Scandinavia or other European countries?、Um, not that I know of. I don't think so. I、mm -hmm. think、um, uh, our audiology team at Eric's home,、um, which is a Very lucky audiology team because they have more time than、mm -hmm. most audiologists to actually spend with patients.、Um, they do ask questions about、um, listening effort、mm -hmm. and fatigue.、Um, but as far as I know, it's these kind of questions are not really part of standard practice、mm -hmm. anywhere in the world that I know of.、Mm -hmm. um, Having said that, I think a lot of hearing aid users do complain about fatigue.、Mm -hmm. um, and we hear that, that hearing aid users are quite often saying that they feel very tired at the end、mm -hmm. of the day.、Um, and there are some questionnaires that can capture that type of information. But most hearing aid clinics all around the world don't have time、mm -hmm. to, to go into this sort of information.、Um, so, what we really need is to develop.、Um, Measures that work in the field、mm -hmm. um, or that can detect fatigue when it's happening.、Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's why I think research is important to try and figure out whether these physiological measures、mm -hmm. that we were talking about earlier、mm -hmm. could be used in everyday life. Yeah,、really um, right. Because then it could be incorporated into the, audio, into the audiological、mm -hmm. appointment because there wouldn't need to be a test done. In the appointment, it would、mm -hmm. just be reviewing data that,、mm -hmm. that happened while people were out and about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, as you said,、uh, audiologists or doctors don't have enough time, so、mm -hmm. we need a very simple、yeah. assessment for the,、uh, for the hearing,、uh, listening effort, or listening fatigue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And、uh, in Japan, there is growing interest in auditory processing disorders,、mm -hmm. APD, and、uh, or LID, listening difficulties. But in this case, listening difficulty occur even when there are no problems with the、uh, audiogram. So it seems that the、uh, technique can be applied not only for children with hearing loss, but also the wide range of other children with hearing problems.、Yeah. How do you think about it?、Um, it's a great point.、Mm -hmm. What, something that's really interesting is you can have、um, two people sitting next to each other、mm -hmm. um, with completely identical audiograms. So you could give hearing tests to, to you and me, for example.、Mm -hmm. Um, and let's say we had identical audiograms, but we could have very different speech understanding abilities,、mm -hmm. um, even though we had the same audiogram. So there's a lot of things that, that contribute to speech understanding,、uh, listening difficulties that, that are beyond the audiogram.、Mm -hmm. So cognitive abilities,、uh, neuropathy in the auditory nerve, like there, there's a, a lot of individual factors.、Mm -hmm. So, and at the moment in the standard audiological appointments, we don't measure any of those other、mm -hmm. factors. So, we just measure the audiogram.、Mm -hmm. 
So the audiogram is very important. It's it's needed mm -hmm. to to fit a hearing aid, um, but it doesn't capture a person's hearing abilities. It just captures their hearing sensitivity. Um, so we can set amplification. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a a huge world of of uh, unknown <laughs> information that we, that we need to figure out how to measure and what we can do with it in in the time that clinicians actually have to deal with patients. <laughs> okay, so as you mentioned, the, I ran the concept of the beyond the audiograph in Denmark. So I think we need to change our mindset for listening assessments in the response to high performance devices mm -hmm. and high levels of hearing. So I mean the future mm -hmm. of hearing, yeah. 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 Okay, thanks for your good comments and uh, advices, yeah. Uh, thanks for your time and yeah. thanks for the interesting questions. Yeah, yeah. it's my pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Beyond the audiogram is a very important idea. 特に小学校中学校に上がってくると難聴時のフォローって聞,き聞こえですよね聴力検査の結果とかそれから補聴器の送用補聴器人工内耳の送用位置っていう評価が中心になる場合が多いと思うんですけれどもそれだけではなくって、まあ、あの雑音化での聞き取りであったり、えー、先ほどの話でもありましたようにリスニングエフォートリスニングファティーグっていうのが評価できるっていうのはすごくこう重要なことですしさらに言うと幅広く解釈していくというのは大事なことで例えば、えー言葉の発達であるとかそれから学力社会性学校での,、まあ、あの友人関係の問題とかいろんな問題があると思うんですけれども、まあ、そういった情報を正確に得ること、まあ、評価することっていうのは大事だと思います。まあ、仕事をしている人であれば、えー、職場での環境も含めてですね、えー、いろいろ情報を得てそれで置かれてる環境によって困っていることとか抱えている問題ってみ,みんなそれぞれ違うと思うんですけれどもそれを課題を正しく評価した上で、えー、対策とか介入とか支援につなげていかないといけないなって思います。皆様いかかがでしたでししたょうか第5回動画オーディオグラムだけでは不十分をご視聴いただきまして誠にありがとうございましたオーディオグラムやご音聴力検査の結果はもちろん重要ですがビヨンドディオーディオグラムをキーワードに幅広い視野で聞こえを捉えていくことの重要性が少しでもご理解いただけたら聴覚障害のあるお子さんに対する接し方もまた変わってくるのではないかなと期待していますただしこの分野は研究としてもまだまだ発展途上の分野です今回紹介したリスニングエフォート計測方法や最新の補聴器の機能についてはまたアップデートがありましたら随時告知していきたいと思いますのでチェックをよろしくお願いいたしますご視聴ありがとうございました,ました